Hey, this is Donnie Smith, and welcome to this live Q&A video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some questions I had on YouTube. Uh, I've had, had quite a few questions, uh, like Marbleizer. We're going to talk about that, That where I sprayed some Marbleizer on. have a question if you can use pearls on that, so I'm going to talk about that. had a question on POR15. also had a question that I'm following up from the last video uh, about the clean, uh, clean strip prep, metal prep. So I'm going to uh, follow up on that. And we've got other questions. We have some paint problems we're going to talk about. Uh, see if I can help you out with that a little bit. And also have a, even have a question about the jet ski. So we've got quite a bit to cover. And I'll be switching over those screens, uh, reading that here in just a little bit. And, uh, you know, as we get started. So anyway, I'd like to welcome you. If you're uh, online here, uh, be sure and, and you know, let me know. Uh, if, you know, if everything's going clear on your side. If you can hear me well, that way I'll know. So, um, so anyway, I'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to click screen so I won't see you for a little bit. But uh, like I said, if you're just joining us, be sure and let me know uh, you're there and if everything's coming through okay. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and get started. First, I'm going to follow up with the question I had on last week's uh, channel. Uh, I've got a couple of them I need to follow up on. But the, the first one, I wasn't sure because I've never used this product, but I did do a little research on it and, and found the information that you're looking for. And it's about the clean strip um, metal prep. And I did find, I didn't actually find the technical data sheet, but I did find a, a uh, the directions that come off of the bottle on the uh, online. And I put a link to that down in the description. I put a link to this, the marbleizer and the POR15 because I'm going to be talking about those. And if you look down in the description, you can you can read more about that as well. But I have not used this. I've used the POR15, but not this uh, clean strip. And this is clean strip. It's uh, for metal, also concrete. You can use it for either one. But the question was last week, if they use this, what do you neutralize after you put this on? You know, do you, do you can you use, uh, you know, what products would you use? And here's the directions. And this is, like I said, this is if you're applying it for rust, for rust protection. It's a, if you're just using it for metal, you know, you dilute it some. But with rust, you use it, you know, straight out of the bottle. It says, uh, number one, read any oil or remove any oil, grease, and dirt from the surface. Remove loose rust with a wire brush. Number two, apply product to affected metal full strength with a paintbrush, spray bottle, or pump-up sprayer. Work the solution into the rusted areas with a stiff bristle brush and allow product to dry overnight to fully neutralize, neutralize the rust. So this product, this it neutralizes the rust, but you do need to let it dry real good. It says let it dry overnight to neutralize the rust. And then it says uh, number three, rinse or wipe surface with damp cloth to remove any rust residue. So it does, when you're done using this product and it dries, you know, it either recommends rinsing it off with water or you know using a white cloth uh, with a damp cloth so water is going to be the, the the and that's kind of what i thought that's the way por 15 is as well as you, as you rinse it off with water and of course you need to let that dry before you go the next step but this is the uses the same uh, same technique and then it says the last step is to paint treated surface within 48 hours of application to prevent formation of new rust Two applications may be necessary to treat severe rust. So when you use it as a rust treatment, that is the steps you want to follow. And uh, I think you asked something about acetone. Could you put acetone on it or this or that? I mean, according to the, the directions, it just says to clean it with water after you're done. Uh, you know, either rinse it or a damp cloth and kind of wipe it down real good. And then you'll be ready to put, you know, your whatever you're putting on top of that. So I hope that helps answer your question that I didn't have the answer to last week. Uh, and if you want to look this up, you know, read it yourself. Again, I did put a, a link down in the description where you can get to this and uh, read more about it. You know, there's also treatment for metal, you know, that, that's not rusted. You, you know, you, you dilute it one part uh, with three parts of water. So a little different for that. And then the etching is for concrete, and that's like if you're going to epoxy or you know put some type of paint coating down on your, your concrete. You have to clean it real good and etch the concrete, and you can use this product for that as well. So I hope that helps. 
And let me go to the next question. Let me go back to where I can see. Okay, so I've got some questions, and I'll get to those in just a little bit. So it's, I guess you're, you're able to hear me fine. And um, I will kind of answer this one. It made it look, made it and seem to look worse. Talking about treating metal, um, I don't know about, you asked if you can use ginger. I don't know. I've never used that. Um, you know, I've used other products, but I've never used that. But as, as far as, it seems like most of the, I know PBG back where they had a lot of the epoxy primers and stuff like that, we would have to do something like this to the metal to get it ready for primer. You know, you'd have to use a cleaner and then a converter just to, to, to do this. And we'd rinse that off with, with water as well. But yeah, when you're done, I mean, it does not look that good. It actually looks kind of rusted. But uh, you're supposed to just to go ahead and spray on top of that. I mean, it's a coating. You know, I think it's a phosphate or some type of coating that, you know, it builds on top of that. And yeah, it does not look too pretty. and doesn't look like something you would want to spray over. So um, again, don't know about the, the ginger, but the other products does make it look worse, you know, after you're done treating it. So, okay, let me get to the next question over here. Um, I am located in California. I wanted to know for the marbleizer, they want me to mix pearl to it. If you can contact me. So in this video, I mixed up some uh, marbleizer. We actually, you just shoot it straight out of the can. And that's where I did that marble effect and laid plastic over it. It looks pretty cool. And what they are wanting to know, see, this is, uh, this is Lewis and, uh, Lewis Mendoza. And he's asking if he can mix pearl into the candy. And I went to their technical data sheet and they are not real. They don't give you a whole lot there, but it does not say anything about putting pearl in the marbleizer. Could you, I mean, you probably could, but I, you know, I just don't know for sure, but I've got a better idea for it that may work for you. Let me go ahead and read this, uh, this application just so you kind of know. Apply marbleizer using a 50% overlap. Gun distance at six inches. Apply one coat only. Don't apply two more or don't apply to more area than you can apply saran wrap or plastic sheeting to before marbleizing dries. Allow marbleizer to dry for 20 to 60 seconds, uh, depending on shop conditions, before applying saran wrap. Wrap plastic sheeting. Other materials may be used to achieve various effects such as freezer wrap, bubble pack, sponge, tin foil, newspaper, plastic car cover, plastic garbage bags, etc. For additional depth, try another marbleizing color over the first. Simply wait 15 to 30 minutes, apply another marbleizer, lay saran wrap, uh, wrap, being sure to wipe your hands firmly over the area. It's just talking about pushing the plastic down, uh, kind of making it give it that texture before moving the wrap. Now what this is talking about, uh, you know, where we give that marble effect, you can, you know, you can put a layer down, you can uh, paint it black or whatever the, the it's recommended, usually black, and then uh, spray the marbleizer over it. This is from House of Color. Spray that on top of it. So, you know, do the saran wrap, you know, kind of spread it out. And if you haven't seen this video, I do have a video, uh, you know, if you want to know what I'm talking about, if you haven't seen it, but it's a cool effect. But then you'd pull it off and then you've got a texture. Sometimes that looks good just depending on what you're looking for. You know, it kind of gives it a texture. looks like it has some veins, kind of like marble and it looks pretty cool. But if you want a different effect, you can come back and do that again, spray it again, do the wrap and that'll give it more, you know, texture to it. So it kind of just depends on what you're wanting to do. Uh, and, and, you can use all those different things to make different uh, effect. You know, like newspaper is going to make a lot different effect than plastic wrap would. You know, you can really experiment with that. And there's a lot of things you can do to it. You know, you can, like I said, do a couple of layers of that, you know, allowing it to flash in between coats. Um, but I'm not sure about putting pearl in there. But here's what you could do if you're wanting to do that. It would, I know you wouldn't have any problems. I mean, you probably get it by with this, but uh, they have a, uh, it's an inner coat clear. It's basically just a base clear coat. It's kind of like a base coat, but it has no pigment in it. And after you get all that done, you spray that on, and then you can clear coat it. But what you can do with this inner coat clear, 
is you could put your pearls in that and you could put your pearl coat on top of that. So basically you'd have your, your base coat and you'd have your marbleizer, one or two layers, however much you're going to do. And then you would have a layer of a uh, pearl coat that would sit on top of that and then come back with your clear coat. Now that's probably what I would do. And I know you would have good uh, results with that. So, you know, I hope that helps answer your question. And, you know, if, if you really want to put it in the marbleizer, if that's, you know, just uh, mix it up a little bit and do a test pattern and go ahead and clear it and everything, and, you know, see if it, if it causes any problems. But um, this way, you know, if you're using this inner coat clear as a pearl coat, you know, I know you're not going to have no problems. And it probably give it a better effect with that pearl sitting on top of the marbleizer. You kind of give it more layers and you know, look pretty cool. But, yeah, you can mix these, you know, the different colors together. There is a lot of things you can do with this marbleizer. Very easy technique that looks really good. So, let's see. Okay, Stephen, is everything sounding okay? Is the video coming out smooth? I did a little bit more work to this. I've been working on this uh, several weeks trying to get this better. Uh, one of the things is it was kind of jerky. So, I actually ran a, a cable, ether, Ethernet cable, out here to the garage. And hoping, hopefully, that helps it. The last one seemed like it was a little bit blurry, a little bit, a uh, little bit jerky. So hope I hope I'm hoping that this helps a lot on that end of it. So uh, okay, well let's go ahead and go to the next one. And if you are seeing problems, be sure and leave a comment on here. And whenever I come back to the screen, I'll know you know that the sound's not coming through fine. Uh, don't want to waste your time if you can't hear me or anything. So we'll just uh, I'll check back here in just a minute. Um, oh, another question I had last week, and I don't know what was wrong with me. Just kind of had like a brain freeze or whatever. Uh, the question was, and I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but if they uh, have, have a burn through where they sand it through to metal and they put self-edge, can they put adhesion promoter on top of that? And uh, I didn't read the question that well, and I got a little bit confused. And I was thinking he was talking about plastic, but he was talking about metal. I said, you know, that's what I was saying. I said, we really don't need self etch on plastic. And he said, no, it's for metal. And then my brain, uh, brain kind of uh, blocked, which doesn't take much for me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's saying, could, could he put adhesion promoter? Because it doesn't recommend putting base coat on top of a uh, self etch. And you're correct. And I said, well, we, you know, that's what we do. But I just wasn't really thinking about the steps that we really do. I mean, we don't put base coat straight on top of self -edge. And I think that's what I said. And I think that might have misled you a little bit uh, because we use sealer, primer sealer on everything. Uh, might not use it on a full panel like we're doing a blend job. If we just got a small spot, primer spot this big, and we have a little metal burn through, you know, I might hit that with just a little bit of self etch just to protect the steel, the metal. And then I'll come back with my primer sealer and I might just seal that area to give it the correct uh, undershade color you know, the great, correct gray, gray shade. So I'm, I'll uh, seal just that area because you can put primer sealer on top of that uh, self etch. But yeah, it really is not recommended to use self etch and come straight on top of the base coat. So I wanted to clear that up and uh, hopefully you're back this week and hopefully that uh, clears that up for you and that helps answer that question. Okay, if you're just joining us, be sure and jump on here and say, hey, uh, let me know you're here and let me know that everything's coming through good. So uh, that way I know that everything is working right. Like I said, I've been working on this. I am not a, a computer or internet genius by no means. And uh, so I'm kind of the DIY when it comes to doing this stuff. Okay, we're going to get started with some questions on YouTube I had. I wanted to follow up with those first, uh, get those answered from the last week. It says, uh, Charles Locklear says, I have an aluminum enclosed trailer. The paint on top of the trailer is peeling. What grit sandpaper do you recommend I use to strip this down uh, with? And do you recommend using self edge primer and then following up with base coat, clear coat, or single stage paint? Thanks. And Charles, um, I would probably use some 220 grit to get that off there. If it's peeling on top, it's probably not going to take long. It's probably really thin. Probably the sun has, you know, already got it down real bad. So I would probably use some 220, and then you may follow up with some 320 just to smooth it up. And you can. I mean, 
uh, self etch is recommended for uh, for aluminum, but just my preference. And again, everybody's got opinions. There's a hundred ways to do this, and probably everyone you talk to is going to have a different uh, opinion of this. But on something that big, you know, that big of an area, I would prefer epoxy primer. You know, you get it all stripped down, sanded, uh, cleaned off. I would probably use epoxy primer, spray it down with that. And myself, I would probably use single stage. And the reason is, you know, you're up there on top. It's hard to get on top and, and spray and, uh, you know, without get, you know, leaning into it and everything like that. Single stage is good. You know, your thing, single stage works, you know, really well. If it is a metallic, though, if it's a metallic color, I might go with base clear. Uh, just because the metallic, it's easier to lay down in your base, and it you know it helps protect you know the, the sun, protect it from the sun a little bit better. But um, myself, it is a trailer. You can make that single stage look really good, just like you know people won't even be able to tell if it's base clear or not. So that's just my opinion. But uh, by all means, if you're you're wanting to go with base clear, you know that would be fine too. It'd just be a little harder because you got to get around it that many more times. And it being a trailer, you know, having to lean over and spray that big top and, um, you know, things like that would make it a little bit more difficult than just base clear. But, um, you know, everybody's got an opinion, but me, I'd say 220, go with some 320, use some epoxy primer, and that would be, work as your sealer as well. And then come back with a single stage. Uh, you know, I think of a trailer, closing trailer, I'm just thinking white. But, you know, I don't know what color it is, but that, that's what I would recommend. But you could use a self edge and you could use base clear. So uh, that's just my opinions, and I hope that kind of helps answer, answer your question. Okay. Let's see. Kalani says, uh, could I use something like POR15 DTM, then paint over that? And, you know, that, that uh, I don't know what you're talking about painting, but a lot of that POR-15 is used like for engine bays and frames and things like that. And you can paint over that. Now, I did pull up their technical data sheet, and I'll put that down in the description as well. And they don't really <laughs> say the, the exact products that you can put over it, but it does have a, you know, two-part top coats that talks about brands that they have, I think, top coats. Uh, you can use engine enamels, metal mask, top side enamels, black coat, sterling silver, chassis coat black. You can use all those products on top of it. But I think you're talking about can you come back with some, uh, you know, maybe base coat, clear coat, or whatever color, color the car is. And uh, it doesn't say that on here, but I know you can because I know a guy that does a lot of restoration, and he does that. He'll spray those frames down with POR15 or the engine bay something like that, and then he'll let that dry, come back, and he'll uh, scuff it up a little bit because you do want that to, to have some tooth to it because that stuff dries really, really hard, and then he'll come back and spray on, you know, the color, color of the car. So I don't think you'd have no problem as long as you just let it dry real good and then scuff it. Now, POR15, you know, on frames it's fine. You can leave it black the way it is, uh, or engine bay, but if it's something that the sun hits, it is, does not protect for UV very well. It needs to be top coated if it's going to be on the outside. But uh, as far as the outside surface, I've never used it like the, you know, on top of the hood or out, you know, the fenders, doors. Uh, if that's what you're asking, use it on those type of parts. I've never used that on those type of parts. You know, I'd probably prefer, you know, like if it's metal, uh, maybe you had it sandblasted or you've sanded it down and you're just wanting to go back to some coatings. You know, I like epoxy. You know, that, that's just, again, that's my opinion, just like the wet last question, but I would probably put epoxy on it. And, and then you can you can put epoxy on just about top of anything. It's real compatible with all products, and you can spray almost anything on top of it. So that, that's one thing that I like about epoxy is it's very friendly. You know, it's very friendly. Uh, some of the self-etch, you can get in trouble. You might have some lifting issues if you get too thick or might, you know, lift the, the edges of the paint and, and you know different things like that that you can get in trouble with the self edge but um but yeah you you can paint that you know i would have no problem doing that and i've seen seen guys do that i've used it uh but i just left it black because it was in areas that uh you know wasn't wasn't going to be painted you know like the 
the frame and stuff. But yeah, I would have no problem painting that. I've seen guys do it and it looked great and lasted. So, but yeah, if you want to read this technical data sheet that I'm looking at, you can put it, uh, it'll be down in the description. You can read it, take a closer look at that. Okay, let's go to the next question here that I've had. Let's see. Let's see. Let me see. Okay, Steve Terrell says, I, I need help on a 69C10 step side. Uh, it needs welding fabrication and replacement. Do you do that kind of work as well? I, I do. I have done some. Uh, you know, we've done some some restoration videos. I uh, currently don't have one that I'm working on right now, but I probably will soon. I know we've done a Mustang, a couple of Mustangs, uh, and I have a 65 Mustang, and I'm still working on that. I never did finish that one, but uh, yeah, we do some of that. Uh, you know, it'll be a little bit before I get back into that type of video, though. Um, Okay, now this is on a video where the base coat's real bumpy and it's rough and getting a lot of those. But, uh, Joe Miner says, what do I do if I pull clear or put clear on and did not sand the grit down? So basically put the base coat on, it came out real rough, uh, rough but you went ahead and sprayed it. Well, that roughness is still going to be there. And then it's it's going to show through the clear coat. Now there's a couple of things you can do depending on how bad it is. Um, if uh, if it's not too bad, you might can just sand and buff that. You know, probably knock it down with some 1200, and then go with some 1500 and cut down. I don't know what system you use, but the system I use is 3M, and that goes all the way up to 5000. You know, but whatever buffing system you use, uh, sand it down, buff it out. You know, if it's not too bad, that might take it, you know, might make it smooth where you can't see it. If it's really, really bad and that buffing is not going to smooth that up, uh, about the only thing you can do is to sand it down, uh, reshoot some base coat and re-clear. Now, I want to talk about that just for a minute because I'm getting a lot of the same question. And there's, I think I've got another one about that, about this problem. And I think I'm getting so many this time of year. Uh, I think in this video, I was talking about, a lot of your air pressure and your distance, you know, because that can be a problem. But I'm thinking right now, a big problem is that it's so hot, you know, and, and that that uh, stuff's just drying before it hits the panel. It's not having time to flow out. So make sure that you're using the, the slowest uh, reducers or catalysts that they have so that it does, you know, it's for this temperature. And sometimes I may even have a special uh, catalyst or, or reducer you know for extra hot weather like this or some type of retarder that really slows that down and i think that's why i'm getting so many questions about this just within the last couple of weeks is because you know temperature here anyway and i'm sure everywhere else too i mean it's been super hot so i think that's the main problem uh, also shooting too far away you know that's going to cause it uh and uh too much air pressures all the things but i, I i'm thinking it's probably the temperature right now Let's see. Let's see. One with all says, I searched for this information for a month. Thanks. The comments really make sense. Should I make my MR2 matte black and be cool, as my girlfriend says, or go for candy colors like green or sun gold? Um, this, this, uh, I mean, that, that's a preference, just what you're wanting. You know, that's, that is up to you, but I will talk a little bit about this uh, matte black. Uh, it's got some good and bad about it. The good is not as much stuff shows up because it don't have that reflection where you can see dense. When the light hits it, that's really what you're seeing is those reflections, how it bounces off that metal. So you don't have that. It's like looking at a car with primer or something. So it hides some things in a way. But on the other hand, if you do have any problems, if you get dirt or a run or anything like that in it, I mean, there's really nothing you can do with it. I mean, you can't really buff it out because if you buff that run out or that piece of dirt, well, you're, now you're going to have a glossy spot right there, and everything else is going to have the, the matte look. So, 
I mean, whenever you spray it, you, you know, you got to make sure everything sprays right, sprays smooth in a really clean environment so that you don't have any of these problems. So it is, and it's a little bit easier to strike. So you got to have a really good overlap technique, you know, to get that to look right. So I think the mat may be a little bit harder to spray. Uh, you know, you, you could go with one of these other colors that you like. Um, maybe one that looks like a candy. If you, if you haven't sprayed much, I would get a color that, that you like that's not a tri-coat. Uh, tri-coats are, you got to spray that a little bit different, might have a little bit more skill. So you might just uh, look for a glossy color and uh, pick one that you like and shoot at that color, you know, like your, your uh, green or, or sun gold. Uh, so, again, both the, 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 the black and, and the candy, you know, it takes a little bit different technique to spray that and make it look like right. So, uh, but hey, you know, I mean, if you want to give it a try, you know, get your test panel out. And I always recommend doing this, you know, especially if you're not sure. Always uh, spray, you know, it doesn't have to be a big one, just something so you can kind of get the hang of it and see what it's going to look like when it's finished. So I mean, you don't want to spray anything too big because I know the paint materials are real expensive. But always test it out a little bit if you're not real familiar with it. Okay, Matthew Rep asked the question. Says, Hi, Donnie Smith. You have to use. Do you have to use the base coat blender on a blend job? Do you need to polish the edges on new clear coat with blend solvent to melt the new clear? Okay, now this is a video where I'm showing. I'm just kind of demonstrating how to blend within a panel. So you like you spot your 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 base coat in, and I'm kind of uh, transitioning the new base coat into the old base coat so it kind of fades into that and in this video i'll kind of go through extremes where i actually uh you know do that several times you know mixing it with with a, a base clear is basically all it is you know uh this is a ppg i'm using here deltron but to, to answer your question no you don't have to use that that blender you know that base coat uh that just makes it easier it makes it easier to transition that into the other color we will never see a difference in the color even though it is different like I showed in this video uh, you by the eye you cannot tell where what, where one color starts or when the other ends or that's even a different color and but you don't have to use that I've sprayed a lot of them where I just use the base coat and I kind of fade that out by itself so you don't have to use that now the other part of that normally I try to uh, clear coat the whole panel you know i usually don't stop the clear and then try to buff that out if i do it's going to be in a small area like a, a dog leg or a pillar or something small where i can get by with it uh usually wouldn't want to try to do that just in half of half the panel because you are going to notice it you're going to see it and then if you try to buff it you know it's it's going to show up and then it's going to uh, be easier for the sun to attack that edge later uh you know if you're just wanting to touch up a little spot you know, I, you know, I have done that, not much, but normally if you want a good quality job, just go ahead and uh, clear coat the whole panel. So you'd uh, blend your, your paint in, and then you'd already have the whole surface sanded with 800, whatever you use, 800,000 grit, and then just go ahead and clear coat the whole panel. Okay, Moses Nuri says, uh, can you apply primer on non-glass paint or non-gloss paint? I apply primer, let it dry, then apply the paint, but I notice uh, scratch marks. I was wondering if, if I can apply or reapply primer to cover scratches or what I need to sand that out and prime again. Yeah, normally I try to get all the scratches I can out before applying primer. I mean, it, primer surfacer will fill some, uh, you know, the scratches, but if it's very deep, I'd normally try to, you know, sand that scratch out, feather edge it, you know, and then come back and prime it and block it out. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think that'd be your best bet, especially if it's a noticeable scratch. You know, I'd probably go ahead and sand that out and reprime again and block again, so. Alan Reese. Okay, here's another one. Same kind of the same thing. It says, uh, 
Great help. Trying to fix overspray in clear. Very dry air on the day. Looked like it had snowed on the roof top trying to work on how to take it out. Okay, and I've had that happen to me. You know, this is something I've been through. And if, if it's really hot, maybe it's, you know, you're not getting it on fast enough, but you're actually spraying, and it's just turning into, you know, almost dry and turning into this white, like I said, snow, you know, on the panel. And so probably you need to make sure you're using the right catalyst or hardener or figure out some way to make that slow down, you know, even more. And especially on the tops where the overspray comes and lands, it's just drying before it gets there. And then you're going to have a rough texture. So to fix that, you know, and that, that's on the clear, it's usually the one doing that. Um, you know, see if you got the hot reducer, the hot catalyst, and if it's still doing that, check with your paint manufacturer. Uh, some of them have an additive that you can put in to even help it slow down more, you know, like a retarder or some other type of additive. Because the way this temperature is being, it's just the, the, these products are just drying, you know, way too fast. Even if you are the right distance away and right air pressure, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to get them, you know, wet looking and, uh, you know, keep that wet look with it drying so fast. So, yeah, make sure you got the slowest uh, drying products and check with your manufacturer, see if they got something to help slow that down a little bit more. And what, if you can just slow that down from drying quite so fast, then it'll have time to land on the surface and flow out not be uh, shooting out that white stuff. I know exactly what you're talking about. That I, I've had that happen to me. Let's see. Okay, now here's a question. Uh, Brad... Uh, says, uh, can I ask what the problem turned out to be with the flow, water flow and cooling? Having the same issue and researching some solutions. Thanks for sharing your video. And that is the thing about these uh, jet skis. You know, I got them. I didn't know a lot about them. And it's, you know, you do. You have to do lots and lots of research. So I feel you there, Brad. I mean, it's a, I've had to deal with the same thing. And that's why I did some videos of them. You know, it's just a, you know, if I'm having that problem, I'm sure a lot of people are too. And it's really hard, like on cars, it's a lot easier to find the information out there, specs and everything. But, uh, but to answer your question, I have, I have more videos that I haven't uploaded. I think in this video you commented, the first thing is to check the grate to make sure that's not full of stuff. Uh, the second thing recommended is that water filter, and that's what this video is about. Check that. Wasn't the problem on this one. And I did some research, and it sounded exactly like this issue I was having. But the next step is to replace the, uh, it's a one-way valve, a check valve. You replace that. A lot of people have this exact pr problem. They replace that, and then everything starts working fine. Uh, it did help with overheating because we did take it out to the lake and rode it. It didn't overheat, but it still is not flowing water out of that pilot hole like the other one. I mean, it, you know, you get about a, well, probably a foot, foot and a half stream out of this one that I'm working on. Man, that other one is shooting out a two or three foot stream. So water's still not going through there quite right, uh, even though I did change that one-way valve, and I'll, I'll have that video out soon. So I'm still looking too. Uh, the good thing is, you know, I mean, you can run it pretty pretty hard, and it's not overheating anymore. So uh, that that's good. But I, it, whenever I find out, I will sure post it what the problem is. And, you know, I've cleaned the lines. You know, I've taken lines apart and, and blew through them. You know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm not sure what the problem is. And I know on some of the research that I found online, you know, it's talking about, well, some jet skis, you know, shoot more than others, you know, have a bigger stream. But uh, I find that hard to believe because these are identical jet skis. I really think they ought to be putting out the same amount. You know, I'm sure they're talking about one brand versus another. But, uh, yeah, still haven't figured out the water flow, but I'm not having the cooling problem. But the water is still coming out of that pilot hole a little bit hot. So even though it's not heating up too much, it still is heating a lot more than the other one. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have an answer to that. Uh, but I do understand that, you know, you're having this problem and it's hard to find information. I mean, you go to all these forums and, you know, taking all these uh, different directions and no one's really talking about what you're, what you're having a problem with, it seems like. There's not much out there for them. So, Anyway, I hope, I hope these videos help you uh, because I, uh,
well, hopefully I find out what's wrong with, you know, the full problems. But uh, it's, it's kind of been fun working on these. I didn't buy these for a project. It, it was not supposed to be YouTube things. I thought they looked like they in pretty good shape. And I kind of bought them just, just to ride. But unfortunately, that's what I spent a lot of my time on. Is that, that it is just that one jet ski. I've had a lot of problems with, which I'll be going through over these videos. But, you know, it wasn't intended to be a, a, a project for YouTube. But, you know, it ended up being that way. So. Okay, let me go back over here where I can see comments and see what's going on. So, uh, let's see, Odin, what do I need to do, excuse me, to my sealer? When I spray black sealer, it looks like it has all kinds of dirt in it. Is it just bad pigment that's not mixing in right? So, I think this is still probably i mean it just it's a lot of dirt on there it looks like dirt but i think it's actually just drying because it's so hot and some of that is not having time to dry and flow out so i think that to help you with this make sure uh that your catalyst and your reducer you know what some use a reducer some don't um if it does use a reducer maybe, maybe you can try to put just a little bit more since it's so hot but make sure you're using the hot the slow products you know, because it's so hot and that will, it'll give it a, a bumpy effect. Look like a lot of dirt. It's actually just your overspray drying and it's just not flowing out. So yeah, check your products, make sure you've got the slowest of everything. And, uh, you know, may even try reducing it just a little bit more just to help that flow. But I think that's probably what the problem is. When spraying black, what grit, this is Josh Bell, what grit is best to sand primer? before base. Is 600 a good grip? Yeah, 600 is a good grip. Uh, best to sand primer. Yeah, before base coat. So you got it prime, you're setting it down. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with 600. Uh, anywhere between 400 and 600. You know, it's kind of your, your final sand range. It works real good. If it's waterborne, you might even go to 800. The only thing is, the finer the grit, the more effort it's going to take. So if it's 600, it's going to take a little bit more time, you know, a little bit more. I don't know if you're using a DA or hand sanding, water sanding, whatever, but it takes a little bit more effort, you know, the finer the grit. So, you know, 400 grit, you're going to be able to do that a little bit faster. So that's just kind of up to you. There is no problem with 600. I mean, if you're using 600, that will work perfect. Let's see. John Rodriguez says, what do you recommend for aerosol base paint? spray can for small spot repairs as well as spray paint clear coat paint uh about the only you know i know there's a couple of pro, uh, brands out there i know like duke of color uh, you know don't know a lot about duke of color but uh i'll put a link down in the description it's automotive paints uh they actually have, I've used some of their products for these little spot repairs, or they even have uh, pins that pin paints where you can buy your OEM color in it. Um, oh man, I just went blank on the name of that. Um, but that, that's probably be your best bet for that. Um, Cause they do have some pretty good products. You know, they have a, you can order it in a, a spray can, you know, you, you, and you can, they even got charts on there where you can find out what your color code is and then you order it. And they've got a spray can paint. They've got paint pens. Like if you just got a little chip you want to touch up. And uh, they, their products are pretty good. And I will put a link. It'll be after this video. But I will put a link down in the description and with that with that uh, address. Um, I usually know automotive touch up, something like that. But I'll put a link down there. I just went blank on that. Uh, and, so that you can go to it. they they got some pretty pretty cool products there. Okay, uh, Dan's repairs. Let's see. And again, if you're just joining us, it's your first one. Uh, I kind of have a little bit hard time reading the screen, so I'm apologize. I'm kind of squinting a little bit because over here where your comments are at are kind of small, so I have to look kind of hard, and I might get some of the names wrong. But 
Uh, when painting a single stage, solid color, no metallic, and you get a big run on your second coat, what do you do? Do you wait a little bit longer before your third coat? No. And again, there may be people that do this different. I've known to, I've known people try to get a piece of tape, and I've tried it to kind of pull some of it, run out. The edges of that usually make a bigger mess than the run would. So what I normally do, I just I let it flash a little bit longer because that paint's real thick where that runs at. So you might allow it to uh, flash a little longer. And if you're putting a third coat, I would go ahead and put that third coat on. I mean, it's not a metallic. You don't have to worry about sanding into the metallic or anything like that. So after I have that third coat on, I'd let it dry real good, and then I'd sand and buff that run out. If you, there's really not much you can do in between coats with clear coat or single stage. You know, the same thing. It stays ticky, uh, uh, tacky, and you can't really sand it or anything like that. So uh, I would just go ahead and put that third coat on and then sand and buff that run out. And again, there may be others out there, and if you have a different way of doing it, you know, be sure and leave a comment down there and let us know. But that is what I would do. Okay, John Rodriguez, Dupacolor is the best one I've found so far. That actually matches my truck. Well, but the paint may not be the best quality. You know, you need know, better quality for small spot repairs. Um, yeah, I'll put a link down in the description. And there's nothing wrong with Dupacolor. I mean, it's not one of my favorite brands, but I mean, it, it, it'll do the job. It'll get the job done. But I will put a link down in the description. I think it's Automotive Touch-Up Paint. But they have got, I mean, they've got some really good products that work well. And, uh, okay, got another comment. As far as clear coat, uh, aerosol, everyone seems to recommend Spray Max 2K Glamour. But that clear seems much harder than the fact that it doesn't sand easily. Um, that is, I have used that clear coat, uh, not, not, on a, not on the paint surface. But, you know, you know, usually I use a spray gun and, and 2K clear. And I think 2K's, 2K clear is always going to be better than just a single, you know, 1K clear. But, and I, that's a pretty good brand. Um, I use it on a lot of headlights, tail lights, you know, whenever my tent tail lights or maybe just uh, clearing up the front headlights. You know, I'll sand them down and put some adhesion promoter and put that, I've used that clear on there and it's worked pretty well for me. And, uh, but uh, it probably is a little bit harder to buff because it, you know, it's a 2K, you know, it's a two component, you know, it's going to, it's going to be a little bit harder to sand and buff, I'm sure. But th that's a good, that's a good clear. See, Odin says, uh, it's not from the heat. I haven't sprayed any lately since it doesn't lay out right. Went to spray, went to spraying surface primer. And then top coat over that because the sealer looks terrible. Okay, so it's not due to the heat. Well, probably that was what the you know one of the videos was about. Uh, really check your distance. You know, really try to stay consistent with that six to eight inches away. You know, you don't want to get any further or closer than that. So really, you know, kind of get a tape measure out and maybe do a test pattern to kind of make sure you know you're within that distance. If you're too far away, you know, it is going to get that rough. Texture and if it's not the the temperature, it's probably that or too much air pressure. You know, if you get too much air pressure, you know it's got building up too much overspray. And it's coming back and drying before it lands back on the surface. It's just giving it that texture as well. So that's the three uh, main problems that, that I can think of that would cause that is your is your distance, uh, your air pressure, or the correct uh, reducers. See, the gray sealer seems to lay out nice. Um, so the gray lays out nice and the other one don't. Is it the same product, just different color? I don't know. You might try putting just a, a little bit more reducer in it and see if that might. I mean, there, there are some products. I don't know if it's recommended, but, you know, it might say 311, you know, one part reducer but it's just not spraying quite right. And I'll put just a little bit more reducer and that will really make a big difference. Uh, that is not a textbook answer. That's just, you know, experience answer. So you might try doing that if it's coming out real dry, your distance right, your air sprays, your air pressure's right and all that. Maybe just try to reduce it just a little bit more. Let's see, Justin says, how do you fix some 
clear coat runs I got yesterday when I did the spot repair. I'm going to actually respray the whole pail with clear coat after this and do and do it as I should have done the first time. So yeah, if you got a run, just set them out. I mean, you're gonna be uh, clear coating that whole panel, and I would just, you know, start with some 800. You might even, if they're real big and that's not set them out, you might even start, with, you know, 600 or whatever. But uh, since I'm gonna be, you're clearing the whole panel, you wanna scuff the whole panel with 800. So I'd try to get that on a block and just see if I could sand those runs out. And if it, if, if it has to sand through, you know, maybe you sand it too much and it sands through that clear coat, you know, you're going to want to spot that back in with some base coat and kind of cover that back up before you re-clear coat. Uh, if you don't bust through the clear, uh, you can probably just re-clear coat on top of all that. But a lot of times on a big run, by the time you get that out, uh, it's going to sand through, and then you, you, you're going to want to put up another couple of coats of base coat. Just spot that area in and blend it. See, I understand I'll need to scuff the adjacent clear coat around my spot repair with the runs. But anything I should do? Yeah, anything. I, you sound like you got it to me. You know, it, anything you're going to spray with clear coat, you want it scuffed. You know, with 800, if you're, if you're using a scuff pad, you know, make sure you use the gray. You know, the red's a little bit coarse. So, you know, you know anywhere from 800 to 1,000. Sandpaper uh, or gray scuff pads, you know, that'll all prep that area and have it ready for clear coat. And like I said, if you sand through anywhere, you know, you just blend that area in with some paint, you know, allow that to flash off and dry, and then just spray the clear coat, you know, the whole panel or the panel and the adjacent panel, you know, like you normally would. See, Paul says, just uh, just can spray the base coat on my car. It has imperfections in it. Should I wet sand once it's fully hardened? And do I need to have to cover the, with another coat base before clear coat? Or can I just clear coat it? You know, if it is some real, real light sanding, and it's not a metallic. You might get by with it. But... Anytime I sand it before I put clear coat, I usually put another, at least one more coat of base on there. And if it had metallic on it, you've got to, or, you know, that metallic's not going to be nice and even like it should. But I would recommend, you know, sanding those imperfections. And if it's just one area uh, that, that you're talking about, I mean, you can sand just that area and get the imperfections out. And then you can just blend that area. You don't necessarily have to spray the whole car. But if, I mean, if it's the entire area that you're going to be sanding, I would go ahead and come back, put another coat of base coat, and then, uh, then clear coat it. Yeah, and they said the base coat went on a little bit dry. And like I said, a lot of people are having problems with that right now because it's so hot. So really check your gun distance. Maybe Make sure you're six to eight inches. Uh, make sure your air pressure is right. And then make sure you're using the right catalyst and reducer. Uh, you know, some of these paint stores will just give you you know, panel repair, you know, like supposed to be for one or two panels at the most. And if you're painting a complete, that's going to make a big difference. Make sure it's for overall. If it's the whole car, make sure it's for overall. You know, it says overall or really hot or, you know, something like that. And you might just check with them, tell them, ask them, you know, what is the, the hottest slowing catalyst and reducer you have? But yeah, if you're trying to paint a complete paint job with a one or two panel clear, it, it's, it's, it's not going to work, especially with it being so hot like it is. See, so, you know, it says, yes, both Martin Sr. Crossfire brand. I've sprayed some of that. I sprayed some of that last year at school. Didn't have pretty good luck with it. And the gray lays out nice, but the black has dirt spots. It looks like get dust leaning on your paint job. So the, the one color sprayed out nice is just the black. Well, I don't know what caused one color to, to do that and, and then the black, other than maybe uh, black shows up more. Uh, you know, would you say that one's gray? You know, gray may be hiding a lot of the dirt where you can't see it as well. 
black really, really magnifies any dirt that's in there. So maybe it's just you're seeing it a lot better in the black. I mean, maybe not. I don't know, but I, I've, I've seen that. Uh, and after you clear coat it, black always shows up any dirt, dents, and all that much worse than any other color. Uh, but if you think the other surface smooth, you know, you maybe could mask that off. Just do the black area, you know, scuff that up on and and i'd probably go ahead and still put another coat even though it's black there's no metallics you know just to make sure there's no marks or scuffs in it and then come back and clear clear coat that area see also says it's a texture look you get from poor spraying looks like specks of something in the sealer yeah, just go ahead and uh, and sometimes if that's in the sealer, when you sand that, you'll actually sand the top of the base coat, and you'll actually see little specks in there where that dry sealer's sticking through. So make sure that you do put you know some uh, some more sealer down or you know extra base coat so that you don't have those little specks sticking through. So yeah, I just go ahead and sand that down some 800, and shoot some more color, and clear it. See after I'm done scuffing. Should I be using a solvent-based wax and grease remover or water-based wax and grease remover before spraying the new solvent-based 2K clear coat? Um, you can use a solvent-based cleaner, you know, on this. I mean, it's a solvent-based paint. Um, actually, you know, PPG, you know, they recommend using both of them, everything, really, because the solvent-based, you know, cleans your greases and things like that, and the, and the, the waterborne is really good for fingerprints and, you know, the oils off your hands and stuff like that. So we usually go with the solvent based and then the water one. And that's not recommended, but you could use either one on this. I mean, because it's solid, I mean, uh, solvent based. So, but if you want to do, make sure it's completely clean and there's no contaminants whatsoever, you know, you could use both. Uh, so, so I hope that helps answer your questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and close it out for this video. Uh, went through quite a few things. Um, you know, if you do have any questions or I didn't cover something, you know, be sure to ask in another video and I'll try to get to it. Now, I may miss some of them. I might not get every, you know, question that is asked, but I try to cover a lot of them and uh, hopefully help you out to get in the job, get uh, out in the shop and, and where you can work on your cars. So I uh, appreciate you for stopping by, watching the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.